So speaking about your life, you began as a pro musician, according to your bio on your website that I was snooping around on earlier today. So, so yeah, take take us back then to kind of yeah, where did what? How did your your journey with entertainment, edutainment begin? Because it seems like those have been the worlds you have crossed in, putting putting storytelling experiences out into the world, being part of that. So how far back do you want to go back to when I arrived on the spaceship, or should we just go ahead to the vocational era? The spaceship would be great, uh, Maybe we'll but that do that could be a whole story. other show. Yeah, another show. Don't want to alarm any of the mammals who watch or listen to this. Was music your first path as, as a kind of early adult? Always loved music, loved the Beatles, loved songs, grew up with a very highly cultured, two of the best parents ever, my father, my best friend, and my mother, who helped me build strength. And... But I was in sports, mm -hmm. and then I had the realization, the crushing realization about 18, that I was not going to be a pro athlete. And I fell Can out. I ask why? Why did, why was, what, how did that reali realization show itself? I just wasn't good enough. Right. I did that, and then I got injured too, so it's just in case I missed the point, because I often do. And what was your sport? I was good in basketball. I was good in baseball, and I was, mm -hmm. When I was younger, I was actually had a gun. I could be a quarterback, but mom banned tackle football after, I think, 10th grade or 9th grade, and she was really smart. I argued with her for a year about that, but then I told her for 30 years after that she was right, just that once. And I had a mad crush on a woman in Martha's Vineyard where I've been going since I'm little. It's like a homing port, and she was kind. She was four years older than at Yale, and I was... And she played the piano and sang. And I started to play around and I had like a natural affinity for the piano and almost immediately melodies started to come through. So I'm sort of, they're doing it still and I'm mm. more facile at letting mm -hmm. them out. So I just fell madly in love with playing the piano. The world fell away and I realized now in hindsight, that's actually when I was meditating. I turned the light out, Lee, and play for hours. I would play Moonlight Sonata over and over again and other things would blend in. I would lose myself. I wouldn't eat, turn that light back on, and be seven hours later in the middle of the night, just for love. Yeah. The following summer, I went back to Martha's Vineyard. I was driving a cab, and I was waiting for a fare playing in a hotel, this little inn. The guy came flying out. I thought I was going to get in trouble, and he said, do you know any Gershwin? Do you know? They hired me. I couldn't believe someone was going to pay me, and more importantly, feed me. So that just happened randomly because you were playing, you, oh, you were doing your gifts and then someone said, there's can a I put a structure around your gift? Can I we note it. that for all of you scoring at home? <laughs> I was following my bliss, as the great teacher Joseph Campbell would say. I started writing music and I was, and I was playing the piano and I took, I was on an academic scholarship at the time for a small school in Florida, but every elective I took was music for fun. And I was playing all over the place and then I ended up in a small ensemble background music thing, singing behind Barry Manilow. Hopefully, I don't think that's online, so maybe we'll edit that later. From that, his musical director was from Berklee College of Music. I got a scholarship there, started recording music, had songs published in Los Angeles and Nashville, moved to Nashville, was a writer, and playing the piano. And I ended up starting a small entertainment company because I could do the business side, like a translator, and then the creative side. And then that, at first, nothing happened, and I was starved to death because I couldn't figure out how to make any money, which is a recurring theme in my life. And then it took off, and at its apex, my soul said, all right, we're done. We have enough coupons. We're out. And there was an ensuing argument between the linear personality and the soul threatened to shut everything off and... I didn't want to have anything bad happen. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat. So I got out of that and I, then I had the vision for what matters most, the show and hmm. long story short, here I am. Curious about something you just said. Yeah. Why do you think it is that money for you is something you don't want to retain? Yeah, that's a great question. I. And I have so many friends. I have all these billionaire friends and multimillionaires. I in the know vineyard that about you. Yeah, who so I'm want curious. Me, who want me to um, <clears throat> monetize my podcast? It's free mm -hmm. for anyone listening. 
Well, I, I also really trust your choice. So I, I don't in any way think anything is a mistake here. Yeah. I'm just curious, though, because you put that forth. You know, you're clearly, like, manifesting and affecting... Yes. Affecting many people, you're on purpose, you've, you've, you've got gratitude, you've got bliss, you've got joy. So I'm like, well, that's really interesting that you would then put forward this, this uh, saying about yourself about money. So I was just curious if you had gotten underneath Great question. what it is. And it was different back then. I think I had to go and make a lot, bunch of money, which mm. I did. I increased my income radically from my piano playing days. Mm. And I got a bunch, and I built a house, and I had all that, and I did everything white guys are supposed to do. I got a big BMW and a Jeep, and I had a girlfriend who was an ex-model who wasn't spiritual because I was trying to run at the time and mm. away from my destiny of being. Mm. I knew there was something, but everything, again, is perfect. I have several things, and they could be rationalizations, and you're welcome to call, call me out. One, I'm not penniless. I have, I'm in good shape. Yeah. And the way I would equate it, if we were a nature show, When's the last time you saw a lion hunt, have a great meal, and then go kill a few extra things <laughs> for later, just in so case, true. and yeah. throw and drag them up at the cave where they would decay? Yeah. Just because you never know, there might be famine later and the lion would die. Yeah. I have way more than enough. So actually you're fine. More than fine. Exactly. So I'm I was actually just curious very, about that very, statement. I'm I'm You're very rich. abundant. I'm rich. Yeah. I'm like a billionaire. Yeah. I just had a multimillionaire text me because they were unhappy and they were worried. I'm not bragging. And he said, what advice would you give me? I said, go get a massage. Go swim in the ocean. He's down in Florida. He's very rich. Go sit in a graveyard. Hmm. And then go get a journal and write what you're thankful hmm. for. And he said, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. He wrote back. I had a guy call me, a multimillionaire I know from Martha's Vineyard from Italy the other day. He's on vacation with his wife because gold was way down and mm -hmm. he was worried. These aren't wrong paths. Mm -mm. I feel like, at least now, I might get caught in traffic and you might see another side of me, but I did get caught in traffic coming out here. But where did it matter where I was? Mm -hmm. The mountains were beautiful. I actually noticed them because I wasn't driving it's very gorgeous, quickly. gorgeous, I know. And the smoke was a cool color and the mm -hmm. light. It's all Mac. So I have way more than enough. Yeah. I don't look at my friends who have G5s. I look at the swear to God on this, take my life. I took a hot shower this morning, and as I was telling off, I thought there are at least two or three billion people in this world who may never have that experience. Mm -hmm. Once. Mm -hmm. I have it one or twice a day. So I have running water. I have friendship. I had a great lunch with a film producer, TV guy, and then we'll probably break bread again, or we won't. I can afford to miss a meal. So, and I'm hurtling through space on a giant magnet and I have more than enough. Mm. I trust that if I need more coupons for some reason, they will manifest. They will manifest. Yeah. I'm more concerned being here and loving, joyful service, no martyrdom allowed. But I do think there are some, there is some energy around it. I. You, you're, you're beautiful, high vibration. I think... But what you said is so perfect. Like, I so agree with everything you said. You, and you, I, I've known so many people who are, are very rich, uh, who are miserable. And even for myself, I feel so abundant in life. But there was a point when it crossed over from, you know, the kind of the month to month struggle mm -hmm. into, oh, it's okay, the, the rent is paid for and I can afford to pay for this, this and this. And there was this weird feeling of purposelessness for a while, which on my very small level to me was the same thing as when someone becomes a millionaire overnight and they're lost because we're all taught to chase this dream. Um, so I'm not in any way endorsing that it's better to have loads of money. I was just curious that you brought it up because I see you as such a such a example of living abundance. So I was just curious that came out of your mouth. And, yeah. and there's nothing that I would need that I can't buy today in this moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm funny because I like rented a car, but I was almost rented a Tesla for $80 a day or whatever. And I tried to do it through this app and it was so damn complicated, I gave up. And it really wasn't in and I thought, no. And so I got a car that's perfectly fine for $30 a day. Yeah. But I have a car. Yeah. 
I'm not going to walk up here or, hit, or get in a bus. I'm way too spoiled. I get the bigger seat if I can on the plane. Or I don't go. I, I eat well. I have so much. But I do have to say that I feel like in our society and unbridled capitalism, it's almost like the manifestation of cancer. It can't stop consuming. Mm -hmm. And I'm out in LA and I see so much want and hunger. I mean, by people that are so, but they're just never going to be full. They're mm -hmm. like what the Buddhists would call hungry ghosts yeah. who have big stomachs and small mouths. And if you can't appreciate what you have now, you never will. And I just try to take gratitude as a bedrock emotion of what matters most. And there's nothing lacking. I mean, the universe brought me out here. These people flew me to LA, I'm sitting here.